There you go, pick some bands. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how we do it. That's how we do it at Tower Dive TV. <laughs> when Azeroth is casting. And I just go, <laughs> <laughs> you, you can make bunny noises. I don't know what, I don't know what those are. They're like, just... What's the noise that a sock makes when it sticks to you? Like in the dryer lint, I don't know. So anyway, <laughs> thanks for giving us something to talk about by banning something, uh, blue, Tiny Pudge. <laughs> See, we are going to have Tiny Pudge on the blue team, and we have Prodigy on the purple team, VP. And they are going to be banning Hecarim and Elise, both very, very strong champions. Hecarim, with a good engagement, has a lot of synergy with a lot of good jungler items right now. And as you know, he does have that AoE heal, making him twice as tanky than he actually is. Elise, just a very, very strong top laner. She actually can go in the jungle as well. So it's just another one of those picks where if you picked it up, you could really make some surprising things. Elise support, I believe, has actually been getting really popular now. Elements has been uh, doing that a lot, as well as Crepo. I think Crepo actually played it in a tournament, if I'm not mistaken. I think he did. I think he's been playing it in LCS. But Elise is definitely a strong champ. We just saw her last game being able to do quite a bit of damage. The rest of the bands, Vi, Malphite, Janna. Vi is one of those champions that, as we know, great jungler, has a lot of armor shred, as well as she's great in team fights because she has a free ability that allows her to dive the and but dive the back line of the enemy, and it's it it really really great ability because it not only gets you into that back line but it knocks everyone up who's on the way to that enemy, and it also knocks up whoever you are targeting and also does a lot of damage to him. So Vi is one of those champs where it basically say, says, hey, oh, you're playing the Protect the Kogma comp, what protection? And basically dives <laughs> right into the back and gets a ton of damage out on Kogma, forcing him out of the fight. So she's a really strong champion. And meanwhile, we also have Malphite, who is another one of those great engagement champions, initiations, where he's got an AoE knockup. It's it's kind of hard to beat that, which is also a dash at the same time. So he gets a gap closer with an AoE knockup in the same ability. Great champion. Meanwhile, Janna and Nocturne, champs that we don't really see banned or played quite as often. Nocturne has... He still has a pretty good amount of presence. He can really negate some of the ward coverage that teams have, but his the range on his ultimate has been nerfed quite a bit since... Uh, since he was widely used, I think back in Season 2, mid-Season 2, I believe. But since then, his ult has taken some serious nerfs to its range, so he's not quite able to get out the amount of presence that he was able to before. But let's go right into the picks and ban do, the um, picks here, not the bans. Yeah, here, just the picks. Uh, Tiny Pudge picking up a first pick MF. MF, very, very good, and... Already, I can see that the, they, they're hovering over this Jarvan. They synergize well r together because Cataclysm does just lock the team down into pretty much the whole bullet time. And, ooh, there's another good pickup. We saw how strong she was. Gr MF has a lot of early game damage, too, so she also does fairly good with Leona. Verisona does have a lot of power at 6 and is a pretty good poke and sustain lane. The only problem is Sona is really squishy. So she's going to really need to stay in the back with Varus and rely on both of their poke to be able to, you know, really push them back and keep them at bay. Because that's really how you counter poke lanes is you all in them. And that's one thing that Leona is really good at. That is very true, and Leona, as we just saw last game, combined with a champion that already has high burst damage, such as Misfortune, who's double up, as well as Impure Shots gives her quite a few extra steroids to her auto attacks, really, really helping her out. And in the meantime, we have Jarvan jungling for the blue team, for Tiny Pudge, who also we've seen recently, he's pretty good jungler. I think we've seen him play both games earlier today. Huh? Or... What do you mean? We've seen Jarvan played in both games earlier oh, today. I believe. Yeah, actually. Yeah. I believe you're right, and I don't know. Did he? Didn't he lose both games? I I think he won the first game, didn't he? I don't know. I I thought he I thought he lost uh, both games. Well, I'm not Cause, sure, cause but either way. We had a Shaco, and then we had a. Uh... Yeah, I don't. I don't remember. I don't. I don't really remember too well, but oh, we have a Shaco this game as well. Very interesting picks. Uh, so Jarvan and Ashaka, one of those two is going top. I think it might. Oh, there we <laughs> go. It makes it a little bit more sense here. Trolling a little bit. 
But then again, that makes either Katarina or Lux top. So we, of course, I'm I'm talking about those picks before they're actually locked in. So I'm just going to move over to the purple team until they actually make their picks. Just trolling us a little bit. So Lee Sin and Shen both being picked. Great picks. I, I like seeing them both picked at the same time as well. Basically saying, hey, who's our jungler? You guys won't know until we actually get in game. Because both champs are very good at jungling and both champs are good at top lane as well. So they're going to be that they're going to be questioning who's actually going in the jungle and who's actually going into the top. But on the blue team, Lux has finally locked in and I'm not gonna call it until it actually the bar turns grey. Yeah. But there we go. I do it have to say Lux is an incredibly strong champion. Um, she not only has a good support, but as a good mid laner, she has a shield, she has a binding, she has a slow and a very, very good snipe. It really allows her to roam all across the map going to give her a lot of presence there in the top or in the bottom lane and that'll actually help a little bit because as we do see purple team has a shen locked in there we're going to have to wait to see what their last pick is but shen incredibly good global pressure just can jump all over the map and he can even split push in the late game giving him a little more of a chance so we do see tiny pudge does have a really nice late game team but oh rise that's going to really help out the Ooh, gragas i'm just, you know what i'm i'm not going to play this game <laughs> Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll have to see in four seconds what he actually decides to pick up. But just looking, taking a big zoom out, but from the actual individual champion picks to the entire team, we have both teams going for a very heavy team fight comp. <laughs> this is going to come down to the AoE ultimates and the AoE ultimates combined with the AoE ultimates against the AoE ultimates, basically. I will have to say one thing, though. Uh, Verisona, very good engages, very good disengages. Shen has a taunt. But, the, you know, Lee Sin and Gragas really need to play this carefully. I've seen, even in high-level play, a Lee Sin kick out of a Varus ult or a Sona ult or a Gragas ult someone out of their team or out of the, the correct position. So they really need to play that well. If they play that really well, then they're going to have two... Like, pretty much all all five of their members have a lockup, a CC, a reposition that really helps them turn the fight in their favor. So, you know, they just really have to be careful about not, make, you know, cutting their own throats, I'd have to say. Uh, that's that's also very true. So, we're going to have to see if both Lee Sin and Gragas can end up managing that. But there we go. We are in the three-minute delay at this moment. So, looking, taking a quick look at the summoner spells, we have Lux and Shen both taking teleport. Obviously, this is... It's, it's more odd to see Shen with the teleport, to be honest, so he's going to be literally all around the map at all times. Basically, using his ultimate to get one place, using his teleport to get another, or just using his teleport when his ultimate cooldown is down, or whatnot. And we also have Lux bringing teleport, which I think is quite amazing because I love seeing Lux's roam around and do some ganks because she's got a ton of burst damage, a lot of long-range abilities. Basically, each one of her attacks is outranges most other mages' abilities. So that's a very, very nice pickup on her. Unfortunately, they are skill shots, so it's going to be fairly hard to land them. But if she can, then you know she gets a snare, she gets a bunch of follow-up damage. And if they end up escaping, she might still be able to secure the kill with her ultimate as well. So I love seeing Teleport Lux, to be honest. I really do, too. It's going to... Oh, wait. I just noticed Shen has Teleport, too. Shen does have that Teleport, and that's going to give him two two opportunities to jump around the map. If indeed it will. I'm going to take a quick look at the individual lane matchups for the mid lane. We have Lux against Gragas. Both of these champions are very long range champions, so I can see a lot of farming coming out of here. But I have to say, I think Gragas is going to be the one who's going to end up playing more of the farm game because Lux, she, it's going to be a lot easier her, for her to dodge Gragas' abilities, whereas Gragas, he's forced to use his auto attacks for. He's forced to go to melee range for his auto attacks. So unless he uses his barrel to CS pretty much everything, he's going to be telegraphing where he's going to go for a last hit next, basically by looking at, all right, my minions. 
how low are their healths? I, I can predict where Gragas is going to try to go in for our last hit, so he's going to have to really play a bit more defensively because it's really, really bad to be predictable against Lux because she can land two abilities at the same time, proc her passives, or actually the the best thing to do is throw out both of your skill shots at the same time. When the binding lands, land an auto attack, then immediately afterwards pop your Lucent Singularity, land another auto attack because her passive puts a proc on anything that she hits with her abilities which can be activated to do more damage either by her auto attacks or her ultimate. And that's a very, very strong point of her kit that a lot of people tend to neglect. And that really requires her to get into auto attack range, which obviously a lot closer range than most of her spells, but if she can manage that really well, then it'll be good for her. And it's especially good against Gragas, because Gragas, uh, like I said, only has two long range abilities. One of them he doesn't get until level 6, so she's going to be looking to put some early pressure on him, for okay, sure. Okay. Lux doesn't have the shortest auto attack range either. Uh, That's fairly, true. Fairly decent range. And also, because of her auto attack animation, you can almost abuse it where you start the start the swing, and since your projectile moves fairly slow, you start the swing, get the projectile out, and back off. So you're never in really any true danger. But we are going to be getting in this game here lots of different colored borders. It looks like Tiny Pudge definitely has the advantage in borders, and looks like in skins, I haven't even... Uh, we're still waiting for ZTGO to join, but... They outskin them so far. Nope. Looks like it's going to be... Is that a Renekton skin or is that is just art? I have no clue. What do you, what do you mean? Is that a Renekton skin or is that just Renekton? Th that's just Renekton. Oh. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> it looks like uh, actually the other team wins. Yellow Jacket Shen, Arcade Sona, and Dragon Fist Lee Sin. No Dragon, uh, no dragon Trainer. Yeah, or, or Slayers, so that's a pretty good skin, I have to say. I, I, I like that skin. <laughs> but uh, we do have a decent amount of ping it's difference. Dragon, so Dragon Fist. That's yeah, that's what I said. It's, it's not actually like it. Slayer or anything like that, which which I, I'm good with that. So, like I said, the the purple team, or red team, whichever you prefer, but they're going... They're, They've got some pretty high ping, I have to say. So they're all living maybe, I don't know, in Canada or maybe Mexico or Brazil or some some place that's not really in the continental United States because over on the East Coast, we get about I don't know, a little over 100 ping like Leona sitting at 116. So I can definitely tell that they're not playing from the U.S. unless they're all simultaneously, I don't know, downloading something or something's gone wrong with all of their internets at the same time. <laughs> every Every single... Internet. Every internet. It's is it All just me or, or is like the eight like a little weird? It's 180 for Lee Sin, but the eight is like chopped off for some reason. I don't know. I don't I don't see it myself. It's normal. The, cl the client the client just wants you to be paranoid. Oh, no no it looks normal on the stream. I found out it was like a flake on my monitor. <laughs> I'm stupid, but no uh, I really it's gonna be a really interesting game here. We have a lot of global pressure coming out for both teams. Shen is literally going to, even if he teleports away, he has that teleport to get back to the top top tower. So he's not; they're not really going to be able to push in his absence for very long. Alternatively, he's going to be able to get back to lane faster. He's going to be able to do a lot of things with that pretty much global reposition twice uh, every about two three minutes. And they so. will have; they will be able to reposition fairly quickly. All right. Still, uh, another one of those long loading games, I have to I, say. It's a bit longer than the last game. Yeah, I think it is going to end up being a bit longer, so let's see if there's any little thing we can talk about. Yeah, uh, I, the chat is telling me that I mispronounced Canada, and it's actually Canada. <laughs> Canada on strike. My name is Stephen. Oh, we Abutri. have maple syrup uh, in Vermont as well. Maple if you guys syrup, ever get like, Vermont maple syrup, it's good. Good maple. Have you, I'm sure. I'm assuming you've had like good maple syrup. Real maple there. syrup. Yeah, like yeah. real. It's it's really good. It's a treat for your palate. Yeah, it it really is. Put the cork in the tree and let it soak. Just let it Vermont, down. Vermont's known for three things: maple syrup, skiing, and Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> Which isn't even owned by Ben and Jerry anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Hostile takeover. 
So not really too much exciting to do in Vermont, but it, it's nice and cold, which is great for an ice dragon. Yep, which is what you turn into every night and fly around. <laughs> Instead of sleep, don't need sleep. Sleep is for losers. I go to Ohio every summer. Just uh, mentioned it, so that's the closest I get to that area. I, I oh, the weather is oh, wacky still pretty there. Cool. Oh, we just got snow yesterday, middle of April. <laughs> nice. That's fun. Well, we are actually into the game now. Oh, pause uh, oh, instantly. Oh, guess not. Spoke too soon. Just like the picks and bands, you can never really assume that we're actually in game yet. Ooh, we're in the game. Ooh, we're in the game. Ooh, we're in the game. <laughs> Ooh, piece of candy. <laughs> so. All right, let's see. Yeah, would any? Cause you can read the chat. I have mine nulled out. What what kind of stuff are we getting from from people? What are they saying? What's the word? Sona on the said "un moment pulls." Un momento pulls. No, just "un moment pulls." All right. Looking at the item builds, no one has actually had time to build their items. The only thing I can really say that's out of the ordinary, and not even out of the ordinary, but Lux has a fairy charm. So she's going for a build that either involves Chalice or Tear of the Goddess, two items that are pretty good on Lux because she wants to be able to spam her abilities. Unfortunately, her mana problems don't really allow her to spam them quite as much as she wants, so I definitely like this starting item on Lux. However, I can't see anything else. You know, supports, they have... Yeah, her E parts. at level 3 physically gets uh, to cost the same mana. I think at level 3 is when it costs the same mana, and then every subsequent level after that costs more than her ult, I believe. I think it goes 80, 90, 100, 110, 120 uh, mana, or 150 mana, something like that. Um, but I think around level 3 of her uh, Lucent Singularity, her ball... It start, starts costing more than her alt, so definitely not a uh, mana efficient champion. Very hungry, so the chalice would be very good, especially because Gragas, he he is melee, you know melee range, and he does have those barrels, but that'll give her a little bit of extra defenses because Gragas does have that, um, the damage prevention ability right there. I'm gonna, I would look up if if my screen allowed me to, but the game is paused, which actually freezes me in place too. Yeah, unfortunately, the pause freezing everyone in place. And one thing we got to remember is that after a pause, uh, there's the, the actual spectator thing always goes weird and that puts us behind one or two seconds. So once we get in game, I'll try to remind you of to skip to live after we we get in game. But at the moment, still, I I have to say I really like Gragas's build. He's uh, he's going mad, going to, dude. He, he's going to buy something, which is a, a great idea. I like it when champs decide to buy items at the very beginning of the game because it really gives them an advantage over their lane opponents. <laughs> because if you don't have any items, then you don't have any sustain, you don't have any edge. But there we go. Actual items being built now. <laughs> Drunken Rage. <clears throat> and Misfortune starting with the Doran's Blade. That's, cus that's fairly custom at this point on Misfortune because... Mainly, you have strut that's going to give you quite a bit of uh, movement speed. Even if, you know, you're in combat, the, or you get hit, strut uh, take gets taken off a little bit. But there's still quite a bit you can do. You can still CS and keep strut up at the same time. So if you are mindful of your positioning, then there's really no need for boots, and you can still outrun. It looks like everyone they might the actually team. go unseen here. No <coughs> wards or no anything. So they're going to be able to go directly into this bush, see if Gragas or anyone decides to face check it. Maybe they're just going to keep going around. Yeah, they're they're looking to kill squad someone, maybe catch someone out. Lee Sin kind of doing a weird thing in starting blue. Normally you see Lee Sin starting red, so I think this is why blue team getting a little bit confused here. Hmm. So... Oh, they might actually end up taking the red buff oh, at this oh. point. Oh, but Gragas like is here. It. Gragas is gonna face check, take so much damage! And Jarvan gets the first blood. Zenith Blade holding him there from flashing at the last minute. Oh, you never really want to face check this early in the game if you have no means of getting vision. And Gragas really didn't, and that was a really, really delayed point to check the red buff. If he'd have walked into that bush, you know, when he got there, or a few seconds after he got there, around the 50 second mark or so, or before that, then that might be a time to walk into the bush, because you might be safe. The enemies might not be able to get there in time. But at the moment, you know, he 
face checked a little bit too late and the enemies were already there so he's given up an early kill and that actually went off to Jarvan who's going to be really far ahead of Lee Sin in his jungle and I can expect some really early ganks coming off of that play. Well, I half expected Lee Sin to go and try to take their red. Leona knowing that's a possibility and warding against it so very very good job on her part there uh, placing that ward in mid lane. Gonna, it's gonna literally tell her if they're going around up back this way to gank because that's a very possible thing for junglers to do in order to gank bot lane early because not everyone really has vision of this area. That's why pro players ward that so much because you really see the jungler sneaking back in there and it can really save your top laner or your bot lane. It really can. And now, uh, one, th one other thing I would like to point out is the fact that Leona did not start Fairy Charm, which a lot of supports like to do, but she's basically one of those other champions that I uh, talked about before. Thresh is also one of them, where they're not going to be spamming their spells because, and it's a, that's especially true on Leona because every one of Leona's spells outside of her ultimate requires you to be in melee range or requires you to jump. Here goes the engagement top lane here. Shen taking a lot of damage. Ignite is ticking down. Stayed a little bit too long. Flashed away from the Renekton. Bot lane, there's an engagement too, but we're going back top lane here. Looks like both will escape. Renekton did tank that tower a little bit. Looks like Lee Sin trying to go back in there, but taking a lot of damage. Sharvin has the red buff. That's going to be a flag for the kill. And as we can see, uh, Red Team's bot lane being taken down low too. They had a f they had a pretty good fight because as you know, the way you beat a poke lane in the bottom lane is to all in them. And misfortune, Leona did just that. <laughs> just uh, oh, and the top Hard lane again. engagement here. Quick pick up there on the Shen Shen. Staying under tower and Jarvan deciding, hey, we can still get this kill. Very, very good job. And a very, very aggressive start by Tiny Pudge. I believe they didn't win last time. And it looks like Sona, very, very nice double up. Bouncing quite a distance there. She did waste her flash, though. And it looks like oh actually my God, the Leona, minions? Leona in trouble here. All Varus needs to do is hit a Q right here. But no, she's going to go the exactly the right way. And Varus is going to back off. Yeah, I definitely like how she didn't round the corner directly off. She sort of ran towards the upper corner of the dragon pit, and that's basically saying, all right, I expect Varus to say, all right, he's going to be traveling right down towards the bottom lane as soon as he rounds the corner. So Varus could potentially either use his arrow. Oh, there's a ward in that bush, Leona. Oh, just barely we both, getting out of we there both alive. Cringe. Both of us. Yeah, yeah, we did. Uh, one thing I would like to draw attention back to is that in the top lane, really can't understand why Lee Sin decided to go back into that fight, but yeah, here's Gang. It looks gang. like there is a 2v1, getting the slowdown on Renekton, but Shen being taken down solo, Renekton, though it's just so many minions. As you saw, he probably took about a fourth of his health and minions there. But Lee Sin picking up that kill, not the worst thing is Renekton's not going to be able to push that lane, actually. So, Shen isn't going to get that much farther behind. Shen, as you can see, buying two cloth armors really just wants to survive. So he has two cloth armors and potions. Might go for an early tab eye. And very, very nice job by Jarvan. Sona's flash was down. He's going to be able to flash away. And Sona, not going to be able to flash that. I can tell this guy plays Jarvan quite a bit because he's got the standard Lance timing together or uh, the e d EQ combo together because it's dreamless. A lot of times there's... If you activate your Q too early afterwards, Ooh, but Jarvin oh my god, Jarvis. Getting caught out. I don't know what he was doing there. Maybe he had some ping issues or something else, but he just walked up to Lux, auto attacked, and Jarvin was just right there, ready to capitalize. Like how the, the flag was sticking out of uh, Gragas's belly, just like <laughs> conquered, conquered the mountain that is Gragas. But at, at the boss. same time, like I said earlier, Lux really looking to put on a lot of early game harass and damage on to Gragas and aggression as well. And wow, Jarvan going pretty deep there, seeing if he can catch Sona out. Sona's still only level 3, whereas the bot lane for the blue team, Misfortune's level 5, Leona's level 4, so pretty far behind right there. She's already gotten two deaths to her name. It looks like she went mana manipulator first, so she's really just looking to stay back, be absolutely zero aggression, and just try to give Varus as much poke as he can possibly get. And there Renekton catching out Lee Sin here, doing a lot of damage, but there goes the slow. He's going to back out, just again bullying him out of his jungle. Right now, Tiny Pudge playing a very, very dominant game here. They went for a lot of early game pressure, and we're seeing... I really, really like Ace Jarvan right now, and there he goes on Gragas again. 
Greg is all keeping him in tower range, taking a lot of damage actually. He's gonna ignite, he might go down here! And it looks like he's actually going to get away. Very nice jump over there. Bot lane, we are seeing a fight as well. Leona being taken low. One more tower shot flying into her, but MF so strong. Varus missing the all, popping the barrier! He's gonna be taken down though. Oh, it's Paul having enough health and Varus un oh, underestimating his damage. Actually, both of them have the same amount of damage, but I guess missing that ult really crucial because Varus' ult oh. does do damage as well. Lux is on her way. She is level 6, but Misfortune decided to back, so there's not anything that's going to be able to come out of that lane. And there's actually double pink wards in the bottom bush on the red team side. No one actually. Ooh, very nice there. steal there! Lux oh my God, did she warding, really? warding the enemy blue, Sona immediately deciding to pink ward it after that, but... It's pretty much too late right now. Oh. That was a perfect steal, and Gragas's barrel, as you know, has a much slower, slower travel time than Lux. Lux is late. Uh, Gragas, even though he's getting mana regen from his W when he drinks, it's still nothing compared to a blue buff. He really wanted that for the mana regen, the cooldown reduction. He needed that in order to spam spells, and now Lux is just that much farther ahead of him in this lane right now. Right there, we can see she can poke from extremely far outside of the tower, and looking back at the uh, the double pink wards in the bottom lane, I think that's how the fight actually broke out in the first place, was one team member tried to clear the wards and ended up getting into an engagement through that, but it looks like Jarvan might be Jarvan coming in for a gank as well. unspotted, so we could see an engagement come out here. Bullet time, I believe. Almost up, still down for about another 10, 20 seconds. Leona's ult about to come up. Actually, she's not even level 6, so what am I saying? But the Leona could very well hit level 6 here. And they well, look Lux like they're going to die well. the tower. Getting caught out. Varus staying in just the wrong position here. Jarvan's going to tank that tower. And Lux was here too, just in case. Leeson and Gragas now on the way, though. So they're going to need to push this tower. And there goes Leeson hitting his Q. Not going to want to engage that, though. And it looks like the red team, they're just going to disengage. They know, all right, we're pretty far behind. Not only that, but there are four of these members here. And, ooh, looks like Renekton is coming down as well. We might see a possible either dragon fight or the red team might just give that up without even contesting it because blue team, like I said, they've gotten four members of their team down here. Blue, red team, they're pretty far behind, especially Sona's still not level six yet. doesn't even have her ultimate. So it was blue team dominating this game and... It's going to be pretty hard for the red team to come back into this, even though the gold gift difference isn't that big. They're still very far behind, especially considering the amount of team fight power that the blue team does have, and it's not technically even reached mid game yet. So, blue team, they're going to be really, really far Renekton ahead. Renekton bullying Shen in the top lane, both pulling their flash, but the ignite and Renekton's all just chunking Shen down slowly as Shen tries to walk away and he's going to actually get picked up there on top lane. Renekton, very, very strong early laner and he's using that to his full advantage to make sure Shen doesn't hit the lane. Indeed, and he's also putting a lot of pressure on Shen to make sure that he's not able to ulti because as we know, Tiny Pudge, they're doing a ton of map control. All around the map, they're making action happen everywhere. And if Renekton can take Shen down to about a quarter of his health, then even if Shen ults in, he will be able to get bursted down fairly quickly. So he yeah. just wants and to make sure And there goes the bullet time there. Leona very far up front, taking a lot of damage, actually. Could go down. Varus ult goes down on Misfortune, but Varus being taken so low. Exhaust goes out, and he's going to be able to get away. Not going to be able to get the auto attack, but actually stays around too long. There's MF's barrier. And now MF taking a lot of damage from the minions and Sona. One more Q is going to pick her up here. MF needs to worry about getting her passive up. Very nice job! Whoa. Lux timing that perfectly. Gets picked up, but still capitalizing on that with a kill. Very, very well played there by the blue team, knowing that MF was going to go down. Yeah, they might as well get a kill out of it. And they're really far ahead. Obviously, MF flashing th into the tower to try to secure that kill. Not really the best move in a normal game, but they're so far ahead that it really doesn't matter that much. And at the same time, they're just getting all their members more fed as well. Lux got another assist on top of that. She's going to be farther ahead in her build than Gragas is. And Ooh. oh, there, there's a long-range snare. And he's forced to body slam out of the way because he knows if the follow-up lands then she's going to be doing a lot of damage, and her ultimate is on a short cooldown. It's almost back up again, I think just a couple more seconds, 
and it will be back up. And one second, there it's back up. As we see, just a really, really short cooldown on Lux's ultimate. Yeah, I think the base cooldowns are like, what, 60 uh, si or 70, 40, 30, something like that. Or, or maybe maybe it's it's really low. You can get it as low as like 23, 24 seconds. And it yeah. looks like bot lane, full oh, Tarvin junking on him. Varus can flash away. Sona, unfortunately, not going to be so lucky. Did blow that flash to try and pick up that MF earlier. And she will go down. Not entirely sure what the red team was doing that far extended in the first place. They ha do have sufficient ward coverage, but at the same time, they're so far behind that if Leona does that, Varys, they can... Yeah, <laughs> Leona yeah, jumps on Varus like that, exhausting him, not going to be able to put out any damage. And it looks like this is going to be a tower and possibly a dragon. Red team's blue buff just coming back up, so they might be able to get it. Red denying another blue buff, and it, actually they might be looking to push another thing. Lee Sin is down here, though. Not really going to be able to do too much, though really only has a sight stone. That's very true, and as I said before, they're, they shouldn't have been that overextended in the first place, Sona and Varus. If, if Leona and Misfortune can dive under a tower with Leona landing a Zenith Blade and do that much damage, what's stopping them from doing that in the lane, where there's not even the safety of the tower to hide behind? Definitely a misplay on the red team's part for being caught that far out. Even... Even if you want CS, there's a line where you don't want to cross, and that line is, if I get this CS, if I get this one last hit, am I going to die for it? And that's something they need to consider. He is trying to take the red buff, goes on Lee Sin, decides to back out for some reason, he's like, nah, I want your red buff, leave me alone, and Gragas is now there, still going to take that red buff, looks like Jarvan going to jump in and smite it, now this is a team fight here, Kit goes down onto Renekton, Renekton's all almost up, there it goes down. So he's going to lose some tankiness. Lee Sin trying to take down that Renekton. Sona, now the target. Shen ults in on Sona. Going to be protecting her. Renekton gets taken down. Now the blue team might have been a little overextended here. Here comes Leona. Going to be stunning that Shen there. Jarvan in trouble. Now it looks like Lux is backing. Lux might try to pick up a kill there. They have that warded though. And they're going to be able to just go on Lux here. Blue team really not doing well this fight. Lux trying to shield herself, trying to get away. Leona all trying to protect her, but unfortunately, Shen is going to pick up that kill. Now Leona could be engaged on too. Yeah, Leona still being chased by Gragas. They're going to turn their attentions to this misfortune though, and possibly a dragon attempt. The main reason that the blue team lost that fight there, even though they're so far ahead, and oh, it's Paula trying to solo someone <laughs> under the tower. Yeah, still, Misfortune doing a lot of work, doing so much damage, and now finally, now the three of them are there, still might pick up Lee Sin here! Can't come on, pick up that Shen there, get the Shen, almost gets it oh, with the double oh up. God. Not quite going to be picked up. Very, very nice play there. The MF, incredibly strong at this point in the game, has a Bloodthirster, and looks like she's going for Static Shiv, uh, most likely, I'd have to say. So yeah. Static Shiv for that extra split push and the extra stuff like that. So, and she has all those items at about 15 minutes. You know, I think she got that Avaris Blade and uh, right after it, she's probably going to go right for the Last Whisper because she is so far ahead. And not sure why she's not building towards a Black Cleaver because being this far ahead, being this fed, Black Cleaver is really something that would not hurt in the slightest, especially when you can land your ult. Nobody really has that much armor except for Shen in the first place. So you just shed them down and basically they can have, I don't know, almost zero armor at that point. Just almost doing true damage for anyone on his team that does a t physical damage. And that includes Lux, Jarvan, as well as Renekton. They all do physical damage. So a Black Cleaver I really think would have been the best pickup in this case for Owitz oh, Paul, but either way, they are so far ahead in this fight, and as I was trying to say quite a bit ago, the reason that the blue team lost that team fight way back when was because they just got overconfident. They tried to fight three people against three, but it looks like the rest of the red team was able to just capitalize on that. They were able to... They were able to react and get right in that team fight, so it ended up being a 5v3, and... Well, that was basically what allowed them to win the fight. Yeah, definitely. Both teams just farming up at this point. I think that was a little bit of a wake-up call in a little bit of a way. 
And I think blue team's not going to be making as few plays like that into the jungle, realizing that the red team still is in this game, still is pretty strong. And there goes the Randu and Shen trying to hurt this Renekton, though. But Renekton, again, going to have the support of all his minions. And this is going to be a dragon attempt. Oh, it's Paul still wildly ahead of this Varus at 16 minutes into the game here. And Tennis. there we go. There is a free drag. Free Azeroki for, for the blue team. Uh, we're doing that again. <laughs> yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're doing that. It's happening. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. But Pink Ward's going down. They're just trying to counter ward, and that ward, not too sure what happened with it because they did see the Pink Ward go down, maybe just trying to get that last bit of sight. But ultimately, the red team is still very far behind, and we've seen a lot of decisive games earlier today. First two games ended basically we could almost call the game was over before the 20 minute mark which is something that is never really fun for the team that loses and if in this game blue team is really far ahead not quite as big a stomp as it was the last couple games but at the same time these guys have been going to the semifinals and winning a couple of tournaments I believe they've won a few tournaments as well going to the finals multiple times at the very least I can remember so a very strong team that the red team is going up against so I don't really th the fact that they're losing this doesn't necessarily mean they're bad they should definitely keep trying keep improving go back to this tournament a couple times but going up against tiny pudge is always a challenge yeah definitely but I again I this game's not over by any means and Renekton goes in now a 2v1 there is the teleport though Lux teleporting up right here so now it is a 2v2 Renekton popping his alt here finding barely landing on Carlos there and that is going to be a kill and they are looking to possibly push this top turret now no they might look to go on this Lee Sin here getting stunned all Lux needs to do is hit the binding shield going out Lee Sin going in the wrong direction leaving the save of his tower but either way getting caught out Jarvan now catching out Gragas and blue team showing after that last team fight we're still dominating we're still in the lead here yeah there's absolutely no reason for red team to try to get a little bit more aggressive out after that one team fight because as we see a few people overstepping their boundaries and getting killed after that as well and that also allows blue team to push down these couple towers giving them more map control and global gold they're just going to be so much farther ahead in this game 19 minutes in we have four towers to zero 10k gold difference 18 to 7 in terms of kills and like I said before, they still have an amazing team fight comp. Miss Fortune using her ultimate for a lot of AoE damage. Looks like they were waiting out here. Shen might be picked up again. Very nice Sona ult, though. It's going to allow a disengage. Leona Zenith's blade missing, but the dunk goes down. Lux is all hitting both of them. And that's very, very nice. It looks like Jarvan will pick up that kill with an auto attack. And now they might be looking to capitalize some more. I do want to say, though, oh, it's Paul. Currently two endgame items before the 20 minute mark. So, very, very strong. There we go, yeah. And it looks like Gragas, he's trying to go for a straight-up death cap, which in this situation, he's so far behind, that's not a very good idea at all. He needs something that allows him to tank through more damage, because he's getting bursted down really quickly. Three door something three. you never want. <laughs> it looks like they might actually look to capitalize on this zone here. Now they are under the tower, though. Lux shield goes out, not really hitting them. Kick goes down. Now they're trying to burst down Lux. A Shen all goes down on the Lee Sin as well as the exhaust. Trying to survive. Lux might get taken down here. There it is. Going a little bit too far in. Leona now exhausted and ignited in the middle of their team. Jarvan flashing away, leaving her teammate to die. Actually, here comes Oh, it's Paul jumping in there, but probably not the best idea. She could have MF ulted from over the wall. And that's actually just gonna get them a nice chunk of gold. Oh, it's Paul really really fed so every time she dies she always has a few kills under her belt yeah that's very true and you know she was still able to pick up two kills with that ultimate even while she was under tower doing even more damage to her and Vernecton looks like he's trying to poke poke around see if he can annoy Gragas a little bit but at the same time that was another one of those hey blue team's getting a little bit overconfident fights they're fighting in the midst of the enemy base while their towers are still up now they're going on renekton here renekton popping is all here he is pretty low but here comes jarvan knocking up both the members of the red team and there goes the locket gragas trying to run away here very very nice juking there by gragas wonderful play are they going to be able to take down renekton no they're not going to be able to take him down and now jarvan goes right onto that gragas there Lee Sin trying to look to come to help. Renekton gets taken down anyway, but here is Lux. Now they are going to be able to turn this fight around. 
and Lee Sin currently running away, but both bot lane are there. Jarvan jumps right into them. Lucid Singularity hitting two members of the red team. And the shield is going to protect Jarvan. Leona's all getting the slow. Not going to be doing that though, but Varus now really low. All Lux need is one spell and an auto attack. Bam. Double kill for Lux there. And that fight looked like red team you know, would take out on top of that. But Lux's snipe, very, very good. Kept Renekton alive. That really m kept a lot of indecision in the minds of the red team. They're like, oh, we need to go back and get that Renekton. Well, that was a bad idea that they did because the rest of the blue team got there and they were able to capitalize that's yeah definitely and one thing that's just another example of the the red teams winning a team fight and taking too much out of it trying to say all right we want a team fight we can get back in this game we can win some of these next team fights but at the same time they didn't account for the fact that blue team is still incredibly fed all they really needed were two champs there Renekton along with Jarvan and they could fend off a couple of the red team's champs and as soon as Lux was in the mix then they were all dying they had to retreat it was really not a good fight for them and looks like Shen might get caught out by Jarvan here as well or the other way around who knows yeah, definitely. we've got a lot of damage on both well not a lot of damage on both sides to be honest as they're both incredibly tanky both teams you know have shown that they're good players and there goes the Grag Assault there Luxdal doing so much damage now, Lee Sin in the middle, trying to jump to that ward, and he's going to get away here. Kicking to get away, very, very nice little juke there, and we have to hope his safeguard's going to come up. Queuing to that minion, very, very nice job by Lee Sin, but it jumps in and gets the ignite, that croc there, and there goes the Randuin. By no means are either of these teams bad, just Tiny Pudge doing so well. Again, like you said earlier, Tiny Pudge just dominates the early levels of this competition tournament every week usually makes the finals and here comes MF from the back of the fight doing so much damage and I think that was an ace yep they're going to be able to take at least an inhibitor off this actually maybe even two because MF already pushed one down yeah misfortune isn't even in most of these fights she can split push and still have the rest of her team win these four on five team fights because they're just so far ahead and as we see Lux, she's gotten Athenes as well as Deathcap. She's doing a ton of damage. She's gotten cooldown reduction from Athenes, and she's also getting the cooldown reduction from Blue Buff, so she's going to be able to do quite a bit. It looks like you're going to try to kill... Oh my god, they kill Sona under the fountain from full health. Bullet time and, and Lux's spells so strong. Lux currently has a Deathcap and an Athene, so... Are, are they going to look to possibly push another tower here? Are they going to back off? It would be... A4 v4 here. Renekton is not there. And it looks like they're running away. Lux getting put way out of position here. And it looks like Jarvan goes straight into the middle of the team fight now. Wants to try to peel. But here comes the teleport for Lux. Coming back into that fight. And now there goes the Lee Sin kick. Trying to take down this MF. Trying to take down major damage dealers. Very nice job by Jarvan there. Closing the kill with his flag lance attack combo. And there goes the Sona ult there. Not sure if it hit Lux right there. Lux's laser getting cancelled there, but Croc showing up. Gonna be able to take down this tower, actually. Another ace. It's two team fights in a row. And there's the surrender vote. That's GG for the blue team. And in that very, very last fight, obviously, there wasn't too much that the red team could do, but there was still a little bit that they might have been able to do to edge out a win in that specific team fight. Obviously, that says not too much for the rest of the game, as there's almost a 20k gold difference once again in this game. But they really did not focus Misfortune at all until... Lee Sin got in, and at the very end of the fight, they started killing her. And all the meanwhile, she was taking Shen down. Uh, he was at about 200 health before they finally started trying to focus Misfortune. I mean, Gragas was sitting there trying to, trying to chase Lux the entire time, and I really think that it would have been more beneficial for them to simply go after Misfortune because she was doing the most damage for the team. She's 14 and 3, Static, Shiv, Last Whisper, and Bloodthirster in her build. All right, well, that was the end of, I believe, the fourth round of the Tower Dive TV, or the, was it third? third. Yeah, third. Oh, time flies when you're having fun casting, Aza. It just does.